Ladies and gentlemen, we are of course coming to you from the ESL Cathedral, from the Look at Comics and Games Convention. Apologies for that delay, there was apparently another exhibition happening in the hall at that time, so we had to leave you for a little bit of time, but we are back and ready to go with the finals. It looks like we're going straight into it as we just hop straight to, well, the teams getting ready and prepared and getting onto the stage. So we will have the teams going up against each other. If you are just joining us and are a little bit confused about what's happening, I know the, the bot hasn't been updated on the ESL uh, Twitch chat, for example, so that hasn't been explaining what's been happening, but this is a, a fun little tournament where we have eight pros coming to Italy, taking part in a mini little tournament every day. So for today, tomorrow, and the day after, we will have tournaments every single day. One pro on each team, five random people, well, five random people from the convention also taking part as well. Yep, sadly, I'm not Mitch, apparently, although the bot does seem to think I am. I'm not sure if that's a compliment or an insult. I'll have to think about that for a little <laughs> bit. Mitch is no, a nice we are, guy. We are your casters today. I am Josh, one of Max Money Pemberton. This is Max totally futile burrs on you can see our details just just down there just down below so hello if you are just joining us here in wonderful look at as the teams are getting set up there are little interviews happening but unfortunately we can't bring you that for you we are the secondary stream right now as this is primarily an italian event for the italian community to, to enjoy but if you guys want to see some some fun light-hearted overwatch action this is where to see it and of course we do have our two pros going head head in the final here we've been told that the final will also be a best of Five, so plenty of opportunities to play going forward here as the teams are getting ready. We see Vonnehill just getting ready on the stage there, and they will be going up against Cypher. If you aren't familiar with these uh, players, by the way, Vonnehill support uh, Lucio play out for Fnatic, and Cypher, of course, the Genji carry on Anox. Two very, very talented players so far. Definitely, definitely. They're very much looking forward to this final because these guys have been the standout cocky players so far Absolutely. I feel they've been very vocal very much talking about how they're gonna win this they're gonna bring home the gold and win their teammates a little bit of money as well that's right although the pros uh, will not get any of the money if one if their teams do win they do get a small prize to take home which I believe it's a, some it's form a nice of you know it's a nice place you go to a convention you get a little bit of cash for taking part in a tournament you get to play some overwatch it's pretty good I like I, I'd be happy about that well, certainly definitely in fact, if I was attending this convention, I probably would have signed up to play. <laughs> so actually, yeah, I definitely would be trying to take part in this. But uh, we will bring you even more of this tomorrow and the day after. We will be starting at about 11 o'clock. I do believe the stream will go live at about 10.30, but that will be mostly just warm-up time, getting the teams ready, getting things set up, and the games will start at about 11. So do feel free to join us then. Uh, or of course, of course, if, if you can't get enough of the downtime banter, then please feel free to join us at 10.30 and listen to us waffle yeah. on. And, of course, on the screen right now, you do see the lovely Italian casters as well wearing the Junkrat masks. These have been actually floating around for Halloween, so it's good to see them taking part and having a good time as well. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't bring mine with. I should have brought mine with. You should, yeah, we should have. We definitely should have. But these are your Italian casters. We'll be jumping over to us, however. So hello once again to our, well, his lovely face, my, my okay-ish face. Like, be kind. I need it. Trust me. No, just kidding, I don't. I really well, don't care at the moment. So someone has described him as... as looks like a Dark Souls character. That was like that was the best insult I've ever heard. <laughs> I look like something made in the Dark Souls character creator, and that genuinely made me just crack up. You know, it's like... Pretty, yeah. uh, pretty muscly. Although I, I obviously don't quite have <laughs> that physique, I'm afraid. No, I'm, I'm not even going to try that. <laughs> but you should be getting set up for this final very, very soon. I'm interested to also see what maps are available. I think the maps have just been rotating so far, so we've just been like being given maps. So we haven't seen any repeats so far, and actually we have on screen the brackets. These are the semi-finals that did take place. It's not too informative, unfortunately, as it is in Italian, and the teams were just given colours to sort of represent those teams. So, sorry, sorry, I can break this down. Can Squadra you? Bianca, that means Team White. Um, although for some reason they are green, green and blue. So yeah, on the well, green and blue in game, and for some reason their little strip is green there on them. But what we have come down to is the like uh, Josh was telling us, we've got the two finalists, which is Vanathil, Vonathil, and Cipher joining us uh, for the final. Yeah, Vonathil so far have been playing the Roadhog a lot. Like we knew beforehand, he was very, very excited to play that Roadhog. We actually have map picks, so I'm going to jump over onto the Italian cast of streamers. They have it up and available. First match will be Watchpoint Gibraltar. I haven't seen it so far today, but then we're going back to Numbani. Definitely one of those maps that is a little bit difficult, especially if you aren't a coordinated team. It's very easy to sort of fall into the trap of trying the same thing over and over and over. It makes it uh, just... It's a difficult thing to sort of break out of, and I know a lot of teams do get locked into that psychology. And then finally, on um, the third map is Li Zhang Tao, but I believe this is a best of five, so two more maps after that. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. 
Yeah, it's a shame they're not up on there, but I guess we'll find out a little bit later. I guess we're waiting to see if it goes the distance. However, uh, I'm particularly happy that the Li Zhang Tower dream is alive once again. Li Zhang Tower was in the pool earlier today, but unfortunately it was the third map, and it was a 2-0 game, so we didn't get to play to Li Zhang Tower, which is one of my favourite uh, maps within Overwatch. You um, being a Tracer main. Yes, and yes. And Tracer is absolutely superb on that map, but we did see Cypher earlier playing Tracer on the pile, so definitely like good King of the Hill credentials. Then we will get to go to Lee Zhang Tower this time, as it is a best of flow, so no matter what, we are going that far. We see Vonifil there on the screen, looking focused, looking ready, he's talking to his teammates, that's what I like to see. Communication, of course, being so paramount here in Overwatch, so important. And actually, we do also have, um, I think that's Givlia on Cypher's team, playing D.Va, apparently a D.Va main as well, so basically plays D.Va and nothing else. Did a lot of good on the D.Va as well, like oh, managed to land a four-man kill the, uh, with the bomb must feel really nice. She's been dropping some mad diva bombs all day long. In fact, the team dynamics here have been quite different. Vonithil has very much been a heavy carry for his team, bringing out the Roadhog, hooking people left, right and centre and getting his team to victory. Whereas uh, for Cypher's team, Cypher's team has been a much more all-round good, solid team play, work, working together and getting themselves here through that kind of play. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how these teams develop. And it's what's been nice as well is seeing that the teams that usually have the people who are sort of just making better decisions. Like some of these randoms have been playing incredibly well for what you'd expect just to come out of a convention floor. They've been definitely like putting the sometimes putting the pros on their backs. Like Cypher's team especially, we saw one player, uh, Castro92, doing incredibly well in the McCree. So he's definitely been having himself a really solid performance. And it should be pretty nice to see if he can maintain that coming into this next match against Vonathil, who was hunting people down left, right and center with those hooks. It was absolutely devastating to see before. Well, that is right. In the matchup of McCree versus Roadhog, McCree doesn't often come out on top unless he's got enough range to be able to shoot him without that hook getting to him. So we should be joining with the game pretty soon. You can see someone trying to get into the lobby there on the stage at the moment. So we should be going into that as soon as we can. Otherwise, we'll just have some wonderful over chat with me and Max during that downtime. Again, I apologize for the wait before. It's out of our hands. Nothing we could do about it being the secondary stream here. We just had to sort of write it out and wait it out. And apparently, I think the same thing will happen tomorrow. So if you do join us tomorrow, you might want to schedule a little bit of a food break around, you know. Oh, about definitely. But I think, I think it's fairly natural, you know, to have a bit of a break before the final. Let yourself settle down and then we can get some serious hype on the go before we go into our final matches of the day. So who do you think is going to win it? Who do you think is going to take it all the way? Like, that's the big question. I don't here, know. Though. Because the dynamics of the two teams has been so different, um, I, I'd like to put Cypher slightly ahead because, quite frankly, with Cypher's team working so well together and playing so well and cooperating, if Cypher then on top of that has a good game, I think they're likely to stomp. However, if Cypher doesn't have a good game, it could end up being a little bit more balanced with Vonathil just absolutely tearing them to pieces because he has been on point. His personal play has been one of the best out of the pros that we've seen today, and that might, that might be the edge they need to win. Yeah, absolutely. If they don't have a way of shutting down Vonathil, if they don't have a way or a player who's basically specifically picked just to go and get rid of one of those uh, Roadhog, they could have real problems. One of the things we talked to Numlock after their game, and Numlock was saying that none of their players, for example, were willing to play something that could counter the Roadhog. So they didn't have a Zenyatta available, no Reaper available, nothing to really go in and just deal with that big tanky Roadhog who was getting so much support at the time. And so they just had to try and make do with what they could and couldn't shut Vonifield down, getting pick after pick after pick after pick and getting tons and tons of kills. If Cypher can bring something out, perhaps, that could shut down that Roadhog, it could be trouble. That's it. I mean, he does have a Diva main on his team, for example. Diva, not the best pick against Roadhog, because that Butcher's Hook ignores the defense matrix. Yeah, definitely. But Cypher does play an incredibly good Reaper, and that might be what he brings out here, especially if he was watching the last games and he was soaring. Soaring? Good use of words there. If he was seeing just how destructive Vonathil's Roadhog was, he might be just like, I am on that Reaper and I am going to ruin his day all day. Absolutely. It looks like we will be loading into Watch, uh, Watch Point Gibraltar. If you've been with us so far, then you might have noticed that these tutorial videos do play before each match, and then we just get straight into the game. So because this is on the convention floor, because this is part of a convention here, there might be players in the audience who are perhaps a little bit unfamiliar with Overwatch, and as such, they get to see these little warm-up videos just to explain what exactly is going to be happening in these matches. And I imagine most of you guys at home watching from Twitch probably understand Overwatch a little bit if you found your way here and are enjoying this broadcast today. So I imagine this might be a little bit redundant for you, but you can enjoy seeing, you know, the footage from basically early beta. Well, even before early beta. 
Yeah, that's right. Well, just in case you're not aware, the objective of this map is for the attackers to move the payload all the way to the final checkpoint. There is three checkpoints now on Gibraltar. There did used to be four once upon a time. Right here, down there, there used to be one, but it got removed when the balance of the game was of the level was finally sorted out. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, let's talk more about the structure of this map in terms of how it plays competitively, because we do see teams defending sort of different ways. And I imagine with the, the the level of play we've seen so far, like the pros have been sort of making their stamp on these teams. Of course, most of the team does only speak Italian, although their English does seem to be good enough where they can get some communication. So it would be nice to see, you know, if they do get the good positioning going, if they do sort of defend that first point from the high ground, fall back towards the server room, for example, and get a good first hold on at that point. It's normally where you see teams defend. Then moving into the hangar phase, that transition from first point to second point is super important. Keeping momentum up, taking control of the high ground. I think Cypher especially is going to do well here. And actually, Volatil might struggle here. Roadhog, he's okay on the first point. Can struggle a little bit to get set up on the second point. So it's going to be interesting to see how they manage here today. Definitely. Are there any niche picks that you think you might see here? Or are we going to see more standard team compositions? Uh, I would like to see an, a heavy dive comp coming out, especially from Cypher's team, if they do have that Diva in there. But it looks like they're going to be running something fairly standard at the moment. It looks like also Volatil's team is going to be running a tank heavy comp as well so fairly standard lineup so far let's look at the defensive team they of course is cypher's team in the blue cypher on the reaver like you said good prediction there smalzu on the anna givlia on the diva Ennen on the uh, reinhardt castor 92 back on the mccree and diz on the lucio yeah that's pretty much what we were expecting like you said you you predicted the castro on the mccree and i was all about the cypher on the roadhog and that's what we have on the attacking side on vonathil side we have got dynamond on reinhardt Splash team once again on Reaper. He's played an amazing Reaper so far all day today. Uh, Gabba Rage on the Lucio. Overlord on Winston. Vonathil back on the Roadhog. And Loveless on the Anna. Yeah, absolutely. And the teams do start pushing forward here. We're going to jump on board with Diamond as they don't even bother holding this first point. So no little poke war at the start. They've just instantly fallen back, instantly holding in a very reserved position. I'm going to try and sort of bait them in towards that server room. And with the Winston on their team, they've got to be careful. The Overlord already, you can see in the top corner, has gone down to Cypher. So Cypher definitely getting an early pick there. Overlord perhaps jumping in and getting a little bit over eager. And that's given Cypher already 53% of his ultimate. He's going to be dealing so much damage going forward here. Diamond getting a few good swings in. Has to be careful it doesn't get uh, battered down too quickly there with Diva and uh, Reaper just shelling damage into that barrier it's going to drop real fast it's going to go down any moment now down it goes and it looks like a good win here for cypher's team nice and early they get some easy picks castor on 92 actually taking down one as well and cypher 99 percent on his ultimate already he's going to be good to go and he's going to be looking to drop on someone coming forward yeah that seemed to go all cypher's way there right at the start the, the payload did move forward and it is still moving forward a little bit, but Cypher's team definitely have the advantage, especially with One, this two, huge three, death four, bottom. Four beautiful kills, and he even gets hooked at the end of it, but just survives long enough. Monofil caught out on his own. He gets cleaned up there by Castro. That's exactly what Cypher wanted. They just went under the bridge and just instantly cleaned up there by the huge help coming out. Cypher getting everything he wants. He doesn't even need the nano boost in the coming fight. That means that, well, he's going to be able to get it, and he might not even need his death blossom if this keeps happening. If they're not aware that Cypher could be up there and don't try and deal with him. It could be dangerous for him. Splash team actually teleporting up there does actually get forced back. Does you get in challenging way, so avoiding some damage there. Vonathil trying to get the hook, doesn't quite find it, however, didn't quite aim it high enough there. And Cypher remains there on the high ground, an ever present threat. Yeah, Cypher knew exactly what he was doing there. He, he had his ultimate ready to go, he teleported up onto the high ground, being the sneaky Cypher set himself up. Beautiful Earth Shadow here coming out of the Reinhardt end and just getting so much value off the back of it. And that's just another easy clean up for Cypher's team. And then giving a cheeky wave. That's what I'd like to see out of these players. A little bit of the razzle dazzle, a little bit of a, a little bit of style coming out. And they are so well set up for this next fight. They're gonna have nano boost available. Cypher's almost good to go with the Death Blossom. Givlia is gonna be good to go on the Diva and it's gonna be just absolutely huge. What can Bonathil's team do to change it? Bonathil actually swapping off the Roadhog going on to the McCree. So gonna be trying to deal with Cypher on that I imagine. Definitely I think that's a good good change on the Roadhog is really very much going to deal with the Reaper unless he manages to land the hook. But with the way that Reaper's playing, sneaky in the back. And oh my lord, the positioning is so good for him. Oh my lord, the, the sleep dart does land. That's actually going to stop any more deaths coming out. I imagine the nano boost is, yes, it's just one out before the sleep does come out there. And it looks like a nano boost actually went on to um, the Lucio there. So I think Lucio has just jumped in front of it there. Vonathil though, gets killed by Ghibli. Ghibli with a triple kill with the bomb. Even gets the pro player down with that. It's so hard to avoid it if you're caught out of position. Just stuck out there. Now we have Loveless tr trying to heal up this poor Reinhardt. Just stuck out in the middle of the map. But the payload is rolling forward. Crucially there, Reinhardt does come back to start chasing people off does actually get hunted down by Cypher, so Loveless does go down. Cypher managed to get back to the point, holding it for a little bit longer, and it looks like they managed to hold it once more. So even though they had a relatively good fight, they stopped the big ultimate combo coming out. They didn't manage to do enough to get that point moving, but Splash Team actually gets a good kill on Cypher here. Splash Team is in a good position to get some damage done, but oh my lord, Enun just does has none of it, and drops the hammer and takes it out immediately. 
Yeah, that very much felt like that fight went one way, back the other way, and then back the other way. Bonifield oh, Bonifield with a good position for the high noon. Managed to pick up a quick double kill for himself there. Absolutely wonderful. That's what we'd like to see out of him. Does take a little bit of damage. And will actually get chased down here by Diva. Has to be a little bit careful. He doesn't get picked up. He's dropping low. He's getting healed up though. And will actually get picked up once again. As Endon just lands a beautiful charge once more. He's just outplaying the enemy Reinhardt real hard at the moment. That makes it so difficult for your team. When one Reinhardt is doing better than the other one, it makes it so much harder for that offensive heart, uh, Reinhardt to try and find work. Endon with a beautiful Earth Shadow gets two. Gets Bonifield Cruise. damage going into him. He does actually manage to survive a bit longer. But meanwhile, Cypher is in the back line, getting kill after kill after kill. He's picked up a double kill so far and he wants more. Yeah, Bonifield's team needs to take time, they need to take a step back, regroup, have a word with themselves and come back as a team. They're so all over the place, they're not working together. They're coming in in drips and drabs, bits and pieces, and they're getting completely punished for it right now. Pello did move forward a little bit, but there goes a sound barrier, but the sound barrier, well, it's too little too late, but the timer's already ticking down. We're already almost on no time left, so we had to use it there. Cypher trying to get rid of absolutely everyone. Death Boston comes out, Nanoboost comes out after it. Doesn't matter too much, he's got the firepower to kill absolutely everyone as they try and crowd onto the point. They want to get close to that Reaper, and that's just where Reaper wants you on the field on the tracer, tries to get to the point in time, but that's a huge defense from Cypher. Well done to that team. They're going to uh, only have to push that far, basically, to take it even further. And that's actually a fairly easy task for these guys to do. Yeah, huge, huge first point hold. Although, this is one of the harder points to take in the game. Um, although we're not seeing any of the tactics that I would expect to see here, which is a McCree or a soldier on this high ground right in front of us now, is where I'd expect to see defense set up, ready just to rain fire down on him from above. And if it's a soldier, although he's not very meta at the moment, it's very, very difficult to deal with him up there because he's got his heal, he can keep himself alive, and he can just rain bullets down almost completely safely all day long. One of the only ways to deal with that is to send a Winston up there to pull him down, but it's not what's going on and they managed to hold regardless. Ian, it looks like as teams are setting up, I am seeing Cypher picking up the Genji. This is what I like to see out of him. It's not too surprising we saw him run Genji earlier today on the offense. I think I can't quite remember what map he was running it on, but he did definitely run it as an offensive piece. And not just on the King of the Hill maps either, where he actually swapped to Tracer earlier and did a lot of good work there. But the Cypher combo with the Nano Boost could be absolutely huge. Smile Zoo, though. Actually, no Nano Boost available so far. So it looks like they're going to be running with a Zarya. So Enon actually swapping up onto Zarya. And I think Smile Zoo, even though he's picked Widowmaker right now, I think he's just trying to watch out and see if he can find anything very early on. But I imagine he's going to go back to that Reinhardt. Yeah, it would be very strange for him to be pushing in without a Reinhardt. They'd leave themselves open to all kinds of, well, negative, bad things happening to them, which, of course, they do not want. Well, it is entirely possible to get a single point hold here. I mean, Tracer on this point is pretty common these days, although usually with the old... Um, triple tank comp. We'll see what happens here with a Reaper involved as well. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. Uh, there's some good nano boost targets available here for Loveless. Like, you can just put it onto the Reinhardt. Of course, that nano uh, boost isn't quite, uh, the nerf isn't quite there yet from the PTR, so Reinhardt still as deadly as he's always been. I don't know if you guys have tried the PTR at home, but it definitely feels a lot different now if you do put a nano boost onto the Reinhardt. It's definitely not as effective as it used to be on the PTR, so definitely recommend you go and try that out if you are a little bit tired of watching basically a nano boosted Reinhardt coming in to kill absolutely everyone. But aggressive start com uh, coming out here from the Diva. That's what we like to see with her. She does start pushing forward and the team does start jockeying back and forth. This Reinhardt barrier though going down in real good time. It's going to be curious to see what they can find here. They do actually all come around the back with Vonifield getting an early kill on Smile. So uh, no early nano boost coming out from there. And a huge amounts of damage uh, possibility coming out here with the Reinhardt as well as everyone just starts climbing up. Yeah, excellent positioning there from Dynamond. Don't know if you noticed there, the cheeky little sidestep to see if he could knock D.Va off the map, which would have been a fantastic kill, because then it would have killed the D.Va inside as well as the mech. And this is what you've got to be afraid of. What's on your screen right here is the Cypher Genji. It's one of the most dangerous Genjis around. I dare say he's one of the top five in the world. Maybe not number one, I think that title does safely go to Shadowburn, but Cypher is definitely up there and definitely in the running if you do want to start listing top fives or top tens of Genjis. And that's all they have to get it to. You can see the Golden Box to join. Enon's actually almost ready to go with a Graviton Surge. Nano Boost does come out, does get caught as well in the Graviton Surge, so he's not going to be able to do much with that. And Cypher gets an easy kill, might go for it even more at the moment. Dragon Blade does come out, can he find the follow-up kills? He's on so little help, he's on 24, does start to get healed up by the Lucio, but he's dealing so much damage. Gets rid of the Zarya, can he get rid of Dynamon here? He's just getting free damage in the back here. Will survive a little bit longer with the help of that Deflect. And we'll keep him alive, even against Reinhardt's hammer, and the trade does happen, the payload is moving, it's moving, no one's there to stop it, Lucio's got to get on it, you got to stop it, and then shelling out so much damage right now, forcing Lucio away, the payload is so close right now, one of them trying to get there, but doesn't manage to get there in time, that's a fast win in map number one for Cypher. Very fast there, at the end, Splash team on the Reaper was hanging around at the back on the left, I'm not sure what was going on there, he just kind of left Lucio to himself on the payload to try and hold it, and of course, Lucio versus Azaria, and another DPS is just not going to go very well for the, for the Lucio. Exactly. So I'm curious to see who's going to get play of the game. Gabba Ray saying ban Reaper in chat. That's, that's what we like to see. And Enon picking up play of the game here on the Reinhardt. 
Wouldn't be surprised to see if it's a nano boosted one. Let me just see what he picked up here. Absolutely beautiful. I said he just gets absolutely wow. everyone. Oh my lord. And then Cyphers wow. is in the back killing everything. <laughs> Paul Vonnefield caught out on his own. Oh, Cheeky the wave. wave. There oh, we you, go. You called it before. You saw the wave first time around, but wow. That was a huge earth shatter. It's not often you see that. It's not often you get to see that. So we will be going to map number two fairly soon. Very one sided. Very, very, very decisive uh, victory for Cypher's team there. And this is, this is what we were saying. We were saying if they find out how to shut down that Vonathil on the Roadhog, which obviously you can do with the Reaper, then it's going to be very, very difficult for Vonathil's team to be able to repel that attack because most of their power is in Vonathil. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just, it's looked like that throughout. Like Cypher's team, even when we talked to Cypher for a moment outside of, you know, when he stopped playing, we had a chance to just talk to him for a few minutes. And he said, like, his team was carrying him at times. His team was doing a really good job, even outside of him. And even, like you said, you know, one of the players is a Diva main, but they're playing Diva really well. And when you're dealing with a team of, you know, five randoms plus one pro, if you do have someone who can play to at least a decent level on a certain hero, you want to run it. Like, these guys aren't pros. They're not uh, cleared up on all the best strats to, do, to deal with some of these heroes. So you want to sort of use people's strengths and make the most out of them. And I also got to say, like, you know, Castro92 still been playing phenomenally so far. Definitely. He's on point with that McCree. Puts that revolver right in the right place. Right in the right place. That's a yep. good sentence. And he pulls the trigger and people die. Now, when I play McCree, that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't, that doesn't happen yeah, so no. often. My, you know, it's, it's, it's just... It's just 50 percent accuracy. It's That's not, not bad. Lucky. That's not too bad. It looks like we will be going to Numbani for map number two. We have that lovely preview, screw, uh, preview little tutorial going in here. Attackers starting in the airport terminal, and we'll be moving out Numbani. One of these maps that is quite difficult to assault properly. It's very easy to sort of get stuck, bogged down, trying to push through the same point time and time again. I know my ranked games go like that quite often, where the team just keeps trying the same thing over and over and over, and it's super frustrating. It's going to be interesting to see, especially with a D.Va main on one team. Like We do see pros use D.Va and Winston, for example, to try and take that high ground super early. So you could be seeing a very aggressive comp here coming out of Cypher's team. Uh, definitely, but it is a very, very difficult point to take that objective A. We may see we may see a first point hold here. We may even see two first point holds here, which will mean we'll have a draw on our second game, which could be interesting. We've not had a draw yet today we? On, a get on a map, and we're not sure how that would play out. I mean, what kind of heroes would you expect to see? Do you think we might see a Widowmaker? Could it be possible? This used to be a good map for Widowmaker once upon a time when she was broken to pieces when, well, quite frankly, every map was a good map for Widowmaker because she could snipe from point blank range. Yeah, absolutely. The old Widowmaker was a little bit scary and she's currently scary on the PTR at the moment if you've had a chance to try that. But I, I imagine not just because of how these teams have been playing, you know, at Cypher. I hadn't actually seen him play Widowmaker personally, so no idea what his quality on that will be. And I imagine he's going to want to stick with the Genji, especially if he's on attack at first. So the teams are being set up at the moment. And actually on the defense, instantly jumps out at me. Vonathil on the Winston. Wow, Vonathil has swipped, swap, swipped, swapped over to the Winston. Now that's not a pick I was expecting to see, especially when a Reaper has been ruining his day. Yeah, it's If there's one person that Reaper is better against than Roadhog, it it's definitely Winston. <laughs> and it's interesting to me because, you know, Winston is a hero that he requires, like, let's, let's put it generously, he requires uh, tactical knowledge to play well, but perhaps not mechanical finesse. Well, he's got no aim, he's exactly. got no brain, he's a dirty Winston man. Exactly, and we're seeing Vonnefield coming out on that hero, so it's, you know, to me the question is, why would you put the professional player, the guy who plays you know, eight, nine hours a day in high pressure, high intensity scrims, and he's on Winston, so I'm curious to see what he's going to be going for this. Maybe he's predicting that Cypher is going for the Genji, and he just wants to control that Genji as much as possible. He's saying, guys, don't worry, I'll shut Cypher down. You guys kill everything else. No problem, we should win. But we've seen it with Cypher's team before. Like, Castro and Onyashu has been doing a good job. Ghibli has been doing a good job. Enon has been doing a good job. So this could but actually be very it. risky. That's the problem. You shut down Cypher, you don't shut this team down. They just keep rolling. They don't need their pro to win the games. They can do it without him. They've shown that so many times today. And, and already Cypher's so low. They've gone so quickly around the back, uh, around the rear side. I think they just went straight under and straight around the back. And they're already starting to contest this high ground. Bonifield, though, doing a lot of damage. But Gibbler getting rid of that Anna nice and early as well. So no early Nano Boost coming out here. And Cypher still alive is the big threat right now. Getting tons and tons of damage onto Bonifield. And this is a fast, fast take. One engage. It's all it took. They managed to slip right through. No one saw them coming. They went around the back, got a couple of early kills, and just snowballed that to take the point immediately. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. I blinked and it was all over. Cypher went in. 
and after that, everybody else just killed all of Vonathil's team. And it looks like Enon just did uh, try and push forward a little bit, just to try and deal some poke damage here. As unfortunately, the camera has been in one position for most of the game. Hopefully, it will change fairly soon. We don't control the camera here with the English cast. We leave that in the Italian hands. So hopefully, that should be swapping fairly soon, as we don't really want to cast from a, a corner. It looks like there might be an issue with one of the computers, maybe, and that's why we can't quite see too much going on here. But we do see the teams start to move forward, start to push forward. Here we go, Cipher looking for an engage here. Gets a beautiful right click onto that. That, uh, Anna just instantly cuts him down here as they do start to push forward. Cypher just dashing in and out, no problem here. Just goes back to the point just to start pushing it even further. We see the Diva Bombs is providing even more zoning pressure on that point. We do see Vonathil trying to buy some time for his team, but he is primal raised out on that Winston right now, but he's just isolated on his own. Does get put to sleep as well and does get taken out there. Cypher and smiles for you just dealing so much damage and just taking care of that, no problem. I mean, that's not the place you want to be as a defensive Winston, which is on the complete wrong side of the payload, pretty much in the attacker's spawn, trying to somehow do something. It's just not going to work. Especially with the rest of your team cut down and no one else quite there. Can Diamond take it? No, they've actually managed to catch the point, so no contesting here. This Blizzard has been used, but they're not actually stopping this point being taken. We do see the Nano Boost come out as well. The charge goes in, doesn't manage to find any targets overall, just not getting what he wants there. Does get caught out and does get killed as well. And Castor 92 during all of that, a beautiful high noon off, did so much damage. One of them swapping back onto the road hole, trying to just shell out what damage he can, but he's stuck on his own, isolated against a Genji, against a McCree, against a Reinhardt. He's not long for this world. Cypher feeding him up there, and this payload just keeps rolling forward. Cypher's team is doing so, so well at the moment, playing out of their minds and just getting such good results for it. Yeah, I don't think there's anything they can do to stop this pain train from rolling on through. I wish we could have seen Castro's point of view there because it looked like he completely went off and just wiped the entire team on his own. And so for dashing into the sky, gets the nano boost on him as well, I believe, and he's just swinging away. He's having a whale of time, cutting down one. Can he cut down a second? Does get knocked back there by the Lucio, so a little bit of a save happening there, but it's just too little too late. It's just people just stayed on the point, pushed it all the way, and another fast win for Cypher. That's actually one of the fastest Numbanis I've personally ever seen, and I've watched a lot of Overwatch. Wow, that was an incredibly fast time. I think sadly Overlord just sidestepped a little bit too much to his right and they just took him off the point and so they could push it home. Well, Fonathil's got a lot to do here. A that's, lot to do. That's going to be really, really hard to stop. I imagine they've just got a plan about uh, doing a first point hold here. I think once the payload starts rolling, they can just take the time with it, just really build up ultimates as much as they please and then try and push for um, just a big ultimate wombo combo and push off the back of that. They can take all the time in the world and they'd still have a huge advantage um, yeah, going forward. Uh, Cypher's team knows about this. Look, they're locking in the Symmetra. They may even go with the Torbjorn here as well. They could do, I mean, these are good stalling tactics. They can just slow the game down. They might not necessarily mean they can hold the point forever, but they mean they're going to hold the point for a little bit longer. If they get that teleporter up, they're going to be able to dribble in a little bit, really slow them down. All right, they might still eventually lose the point, but when they've got such a fast time on the clock already, all they want to do is stall. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the Symmetra pick, like, it's not too bad if the enemy team does decide to, you know, play ball with you and actually does uh, try and take that high ground. And it looks like they are running with this pick, actually, so they will be sticking on it. So it's not a troll pick with the Symmetra. And especially that's, that's, a, that's a golden Symmetra gun. That's Look a golden that. Symmetra gun, actually. You don't get to see that every day. That is a thing of beauty. Look at it. I've never seen one before. That's absolutely amazing. Looks like there's some debate in the team as well as Gimli just backpedals a bit towards the spawn, decides, no, we're going to stick with this Torbjorn, we're going to stick on it. Smile setting up the turrets on the high ground as well. I mean, if you do try and push into that, the Symmetra orbs are going to deal a lot of damage. You build that ultimate very quickly. Symmetra is very good at punishing people trying to push through these choke points. It's not often we get to see her. She used to be played quite a bit, but then just sort of uh, steadily dropped out of favor. Seems got better and better at dealing with it. Vonathil, though, actually going back onto the Roadhog this time. No big surprise there. Running pretty much standard nip comp uh, with the three tanks and two supports, but this time with a Reaper thrown in for a little bit of splash of extra hurt actually no yeah no yeah i'm actually right on that so yep you are right on that and that splash he's been playing reaper all day he's been playing it incredibly well so why why take it away from why him not? when it can still do so much here although i do think this 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 defense might come as a bit of a shock to them i think this defense will do well actually well, like considering especially the attack angle that torbjorn turret is actually going to get a lot of work done this isn't the first time we've seen torbjorn on this map it actually used to be a very common pick and with that turret just on one side shelling away though vonathil gets a good early pick doesn't quite kill the mercy just yet does take him out but during that time cypher's already picked up two kills on his own and Ghibli just cleans up Diamond there with the turret. That's another good hook coming out of Vonathil, but he's just going to get chased down and picked off by Cypher. Like you said before, we saw Vonathil's success doing so well because, hey, he was playing um, against you know a team that had no strong counters, but Cypher's more than happy to play that Reaper, more than happy to deal a ton of damage with that. And as such, Vonathil in a little bit of trouble right now. And again, this is just all time in the bank for them. Even if they lose this point, they're still going to have so much time to play with. No, oh, definitely. And this has got to be so demoralizing for the attacking team to come in there when they know they've already got a really fast time to worry about and to get wiped pretty much straight away with all 
almost no kills on the red side. And a good cheeky hit there by Cypher. He's almost ready to go. Bonifil comes in with the flashbangs. It does turn him up, but just surviving that little bit long. But oh, Overlord just catches him with the tail end of that fire strike. That's a Torbjorn. Gets a Molten Core up, and it's so hard to push into the Molten Core. You can see Bonifil on the side not able to quite poke out. That's it. Splash Team has gone in and found a couple of kills for himself as well. Almost ready to go with his ult. Bonifil just shelling damage, just waiting for their Molten Core to burn out and then trying to finish things off. But from long range, trying to bring uh, that turret down is super hard. Gabriel Racing, well played. I imagine someone maybe got a good kill off the side there. I think it was the Roadhog Annan getting some good results. It looks like he's used his whole hog and probably knocked a couple of people off the side, I imagine. Considering oh, he did charge. some work. It all popped up in the kill feed. And this is what we've been saying about Cypher's team. It's not all about Cypher. Cypher went out straight oh. away at the start of that fight. And then they lost Castro, their other big carry player. And they still... They still brought that fight home and could win it easily. And this is the nightmare situation. The Symmetra teleporter is up and running. People are good to go. Bonifield even saying nice one to Enden, who has been playing very, very well on this defending team so far. So looking yeah, uh, forward to seeing more from him. Cypher ready to go with the Death Blossom, of course. There's no Nano Boost available for him, but with this team lineup, I'm not sure he even really needs it. They can afford to just wait for the enemy team to come to them. With Cypher's positioning so far, he's been ab feeling absolutely fine. Even though he's come out a little bit early. There goes Splash Team firing that Reaper, which just instantly gets stunned. Now, Cypher's turn to just turn that around, trying to get more of the back of it. I think he just ate an entire um, sound barrier there, so managed to chew through all that. So one defensive ult down. We do see also Castro coming out with a high new, gets a double kill for himself. Nice and easy kills there for Cypher's team. One minute 30 left on the clock, and, and Vonathil's team has to make something happen now, or they will be going 2 0 down in this best of five final. I don't know what Vonathil can do here. No matter what they do, they're just getting outplayed at every, every corner. There's nothing. I'm not seeing what they can do. I don't, I don't have high hopes for this. And I'll Enon just getting another pick here. That's going to stall out the spawns. Even more Symmetra throwing out the taunts during all of that as well. But Enon's been playing really well. He's been fishing out with this Roadhog, landing all the hooks he needs, getting kills that he wants. And losing a Zarya is so, so uh, stalling for the teams. You can't engage when you don't have that Zarya. She's so vital to any team fight. Losing Zarya early is absolutely huge. Now they're just going to have to wait for it. Vonithil now swapping onto the Genji. They do have a Graviton Surge available, so they're perhaps looking to sort of sync up the Graviton Surge and the Genji and get a couple of good kills. It also allows him to reposition nice and quickly. He's got to be careful, though, that he doesn't get killed by the turret during that time. Going for Castro during the back, but there's a Molten Core coming out, and people are held in the Graviton Surge. Tons of damage coming out right now. This turret is just shelling away, dealing so much hurt on the sidelines. If no one's there to deal with it, it's just going to start really hunting everyone, just setting up some easy kills for the rest of the team. Vonithil goes down to Enon once more, and like we said before, Cypher is certainly like the key player of this team, but the rest of the team is certainly pulling their weight here. Oh, definitely. And you can't push into a Molten Core unless you've got some way of destroying with that, that turret. And it's so hard to get to it where it is up there without taking a crap load of damage in the face from the Molten Core Torbjorn. I think they've got one push less left in them if they can touch the objective here. And you've got to be so careful when you're coming out of this angle and the enemy team has spotted you. They have managed to sort of deflect a couple of ultimates so far. And they have managed to get onto the point here, but it's just one person left. Cypher gets a couple of kills on his own. Overlord trying to shell damage, but this turret is still just alive, dealing tons of damage. One of them does manage to land some hurt, but it's just him left on his own. And the turret just picks him off, no problem, because it wasn't dealt with. That was absolutely decisive by Cypher's team there. And it was Cypher's team that really, really pulled together and managed to play it super well. One more match left in it. It could be going Cypher's way so far. It certainly looks like it that from my point of view. It could be going Cypher's way, but you never know. Control could be their thing. All of a sudden, these guys could turn around and pull it out of the bag. Maybe they just don't like hybrid maps. Maybe they just don't like payload maps. Maybe what they want to do is get onto Li Zhang Tower and start teaching us how it's done. Yep, so we will see play of the game here. Play of the game going to Enon. This is probably in the knockback, so we didn't quite get to see from first person view. I want to see this because I love watching a Roadhog punt a bunch of people off a cliff. And oh no, that's not where you want to be standing. That's really not where you want to be. Off goes one, off goes two, off goes three, and he even gets four. Four with one ultimate. Oh my lord, that was absolutely beautiful. Oh, that's got to be a horrible feeling. You know when you're standing there with your Reinhardt barrier up, that that Reinhardt barrier is going to break any moment to that whole hog, because that's just what it's so good at doing, is destroying Reinhardt's barrier. And you must have known you were going to get knocked, knocked off, but you had to watch it all happen in slow motion. It's I feel for them. That. It's I wonderful feel for to them. see that as teams do get set up here. It actually looks like, I mean, we were told that it was going to be a best of five, but it actually looks like it's been a best of three. We can see them coming out with the trophies here on the main stage at the moment with the checks for second place or the little bits of reward that the, the players who do uh, d did decide to take part from the show floor will be given for their... Um, just their taking part. And I mean, well done to Cypher's team. I've got to say, Cypher's team impressed me. Like, oh, yeah, with this event. They've played so well as a team. With this event, we've seen some really good players do really well, but I think Cypher, Cypher won the team jackpot with this, this tournament, definitely. They were absolutely incredible. Worked really well together as a team and also showed some good individual skill as well. Yeah, absolutely. 
I mean, Vonnethil certainly played very well. We saw him do a great job individually against uh, Numlock's team earlier today. And we unfortunately didn't get to see his first match. We only got to saw half the quarterfinal matches. But Vonnethil did play very well today. Did manage to sort of get a lot of good results out of his team. And it's, it's good to see, you know, he did get rewarded for that with a good second place finish. But Cypher, you know, like you said, certainly lucked out, you know, perhaps lucked out a little bit. Got a good team underneath him. Got a good team working together. And managed to just play an excellent game himself. Like we saw his Tracer, for example, completely take over on Nepal in the semifinals. So that was great to see. Oh, definitely. Really exciting to see, especially especially as a Tracer main. That was a very, very enjoyable game to watch. And we've seen we've seen some of the community members have some incredible standout games. We saw Hobbit's Tracer do some absolute work, managed to get a four-man pulse bomb kill without a Graviton Surge. In fact, while the his own team, team had was in a Graviton yes. Surge, he managed to kill four people on the enemy without a Graviton Surge. Absolutely incredible. That was very well played by him. We saw some good plays coming out today. Hopefully we're going to see even more good plays coming out tomorrow as the teams will be sort of randomized once again for tomorrow's tournament. So it will be a little bit different all, uh, tomorrow. And I hope you guys join us. We will be starting at 10.30 on the stream, but games will be starting at about 11 o'clock. So do feel free to join us there for some early morning Overwatch. And that is, of course, 11 o'clock European time, Central European time, well, Central European summer time, yes, being technical. technical. <laughs> And that is, uh, for those of you in the UK, we can happily tell you that that is, uh, is 9.30 British summertime. So there you go. That, and the rest of the world, we're, we're not too sure. The rest of the world, well, especially if you're Maybe in America, you're probably going to be in bed. You're probably going to be in bed having a nice bit, bit of a sleep. But when you wake up, feel free to come and join us to watch some more fun community games with the pros here. Yep, and um, if you are curious, of course, as to what this has been, this has been the Looker Games and Comics Convention, the ESL Ch Italian Championship here. Just a little bit of a fun community event, just a little bit of a way for the community to take part in a, a fun event. You guys uh, watch something that might not be terribly serious at the moment, but just to see some entertaining plays. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. I know the production's been a little bit rough on our side here and there, but that's just because we personally aren't running the full um, English stream. Yeah. We are the secondary stream, as this is primarily an Italian event. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed it all the same. Yeah, trust me, if I was in charge of it and I was running it, it would be a hundred times worse. So <laughs> 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 it definitely ain't me. <laughs> but I believe that will be it for us today and hopefully we will be, uh, well, we will be definitely back tomorrow for more of this action. I have been Josh, one amongst many Pemberton. That has been Max, totally futile, Burzon. Hello. And uh, yeah, it's been my pleasure to bring this tournament to you guys today. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun and um, We'll see you guys tomorrow.